Hello guys, welcome back to Civil Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for daily civil engineering videos. Today we are going to find out the support reactions for the given beam. This is a simply supported beam of length 10 meter and there is a uniformly distributed load of 4 kN per meter on this simply supported beam. So we are going to find out the support reaction for this beam by two different methods. The first method is it's very simple and easy if you have the simply supported beam with a uniformly distributed load so you can find out the support reactions for this beam in just one step. Let's suppose this is support A and this is support B and these reactions are acting in upper direction in order to resist the load. So RA and RB. Now to find out this reaction in first method when there is a uniformly distributed load on the simply supported beam so what you are going to do you just take the load that is acting on this beam which is 4 kN per meter and multiply this load with the length on which it is distributed so it is distributed on the 10 meter length so meter meter will be cancelled so we got 4 into 10 40 kN of load so this is the total load acting on this simply supported beam. So this is the total load and this load will act at the center of this beam. 40 kN will act at the center of this beam. So now when we have 40 kN load acting at the center of the beam, so half load will be taken by this support and half load will be taken by this support. So simply the RA and RB will be equal to the 40 divided by 2 because each support will take the half load of this upcoming load on the beam. So 40 divided by 2, it is equal to 20 kN. So RA is equal to 20 kN. Similarly, RB will be equal to 20 kN. Because each support takes the same magnitude of load. So this is the first method in which we can easily find out the support reactions for a simply supported beam when there is a distributed load on the beam. And the second method, it's, a, it's more complex than the first method, but this method is mostly used in if you want to find out the support reactions for a different type of beam. Not only for the simply supported beam, but for in any other kind of beam. So in this method, first we have to take, let's take the summation of movement at any point equal to zero. In this case, we are interested to take the summation of movement at point B equal to zero. Now, let's suppose the clockwise moment is taken as positive. This is our assumption and the anti-clockwise moment is taken as negative. Now, all the forces that create the moment about point B, we will take these forces into consideration. So, first is this RA and let's suppose that these reactions are unknown to us. Okay, this 20 kN and this 20 kN are unknown to us. And we want to find these reactions by the second method. So, summation of moment at point B equal to 0 and this, this force RA is acting in upper direction. We assume that these forces are acting in upper direction. This is our assumption. So, this force will create the moment about point B in clockwise direction. So, it creates moment in clockwise direction and moment is equal to the force into moment arm. R F into R. So moment we can find by this formula by multiplying the force with the moment arm. So force we know that the R A multiplying with the moment arm. So moment arm is the distance from this support from this force up to this support B. It is 10 meter. This is acting in the clockwise direction. So that's why it is taken as positive because the clockwise moment is taken as positive. This is our assumption. Now, this force, the uniformly distributed load, will also create moment about point B. So, let's suppose that we don't know the, the pointed or the concentrated load and there is a load of 4 kN per meter which is uniformly distributed load acting and this force creates the moment in the anti-clockwise direction. How? So, because if we can change this concentrated load into point load, so we will multiply this force with the 10 which will be again 40 kN and it will act at the center of the beam and this beam will 
and this force will create the movement about point B in the anti-clockwise direction. So anti-clockwise movement are taken as negative. That's why it will be negative. So minus 4 is the total is the load acting multiplied with 10, which is the distance on which it is distributed. So this is 40. And multiplying with the moment arm, the moment arm for this load is the distance from the center of the beam to this point B, which is 10 divided by 2 equal to 0. So the moment created by all the forces about point B is taken is 0. Now the 10 RA, if we shift this into the right side, so and if you multiply and divide these values, we got 200 from this value. Now RA will simply become 200 divided by 10, which will be equal to the 20 kilonewton. So RA we got here 20 kilonewton. Similarly, here it was RA was also 20 kilonewton. Now how to find the RB? Similarly, we use this equation, summation of moment at point B equal to zero. This is one equilibrium equation. Now we can use the another equation of equilibrium which states that summation of all the vertical forces equal to zero. So in this case, let's suppose the upward force acting is taken as positive and the downward force is taken as negative. So the upward forces are RA and RB. These are acting in the upward direction. So RA and RB. While the downward force is this 4 kN per meter over the distance of 10 meter, which is 40 kN. 4 multiplied 10. Summation of all the vertical forces are equal to 0. This is taken as negative because it is acting downward. So RB will become 40 minus RA. So it means 40 minus 20. RA we found out 20. So RB comes out to be 20 kN. So we find out RB is 20 kN. So, so the same magnitude of resistance has been provided to this upcoming load. So this is the method one. It is very simple. You just have to multiply the load with the distance and then dividing by 2. So half of load will be distributed. If you want to solve in a complex way, so you have to take the summation of moment at any point equal to zero and then you can follow these steps in order to find out the support reactions. Hope you guys understand and don't forget to subscribe our channel for daily seven engineering videos. Thank you for watching our video.